Andy, why did people agree that Einstein had taken a vital step forward? What, were the, what was the observational support behind this stuff? And in particular, I'm thinking about the solar eclipse experiments. Well, it's an interesting thing that um, Einstein himself, uh, as, as Steve mentioned a few minutes ago, um, had some data that he was studying. And one of them was the fact that Mercury's orbit didn't do exactly what Newton said it was, would do. And it was a very tiny discrepancy. And Einstein, when he wrote down his general field equation, found that ex explained this very tiny discrepancy. And in his own notes, he says that he knew that that was the moment at which he knew, he said, something inside me snapped. That was the moment in which he knew he had it. Yes. He'd solved this great problem. Right. But nobody bought it. Because what a crazy thing to do to introduce or revolutionize our idea of space and time, uh, say that space is curved and so on, just because some French astronomer 100 years ago his experiments didn't match up to Newton. So nobody bought it. Uh, when you explain something that has already happened, it's not convincing. Yes. Einstein then made a prediction. And his prediction would be that starlight would be bent by the sun. If starlight passed by the sun, it would actually be bent. And that made a prediction about what would be seen for stars passing near the sun uh, during, during a total eclipse. And that uh, prediction was verified, I think it was almost five years after Einstein wrote down his equation, and he became an overnight celebrity. Yeah. So we have a little picture just uh, emphasizing what you just described. So y you can speak to it if you'd like. So you see the two images of the star, one coming from the fact that the trajectory of the light ray is bent as it passes by the sun, shifting its apparent position in the sky. And indeed, as you mentioned, Einstein calculated the angle between those two, and the observations confirmed it, and that was convincing. I think the reason that uh, the fact that uh, Einstein explained something that was already known was less convincing than the prediction of something new was the natural tendency of people is not to trust the theorist. <laughs> that is, they suspect that if you have a known fact, the theorist will be able to jigger his theory to get it into agreement. If you know anything about the way Einstein developed general relativity, that's not true. He did not design his theory to explain that extra little motion of Mercury. He used that motion to test his theory. In fact, in earlier versions, he had gotten the wrong result, and therefore he knew that those earlier versions weren't any good. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you really shouldn't trust the experimentalist, because the experimentalist <laughs> knows the theory yeah. and is likely to jigger his experimental data to get the right result. And in fact, many people have accused the, exper the, the astronomers of 1919 who observed the eclipse of having they kept finding errors until they got a result in agreement with <laughs> Einstein's theory. Yeah, they were potentially throwing out photographic plates that they claim were obscured by the bad weather, and those yeah. happened to be the ones that didn't quite agree with the prediction, but since then, there have been many other experiments. So that have always that. trust the theorist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>